Hello, everyone. My name is Lisa. JJ Muti. So, I'm going to everybody here. And I want to give you my top eight Harry Potter video games. Now, here's the thing. I've been a big fan of Harry Potter ever since it came out. I got into it in the books because of the Chamber of Secrets. Love that book. And I'm doing a top eight uh, Harry Potter videos. But the thing is, well, I'm not including the Lego Harry Potter games just because I think those games are vastly superior in many cases. And I think I could do a separate video of like top ten Lego video games. So, uh, right now, I'm going to do my top eight. This goes from the play. This goes from the Sorcerer's Stone video game to all the way to the Deadly Hallows Part Two video game. So far, there's been eight of them, and I'm gonna rank them all right now. So hopefully, you all enjoyed the video, and hopefully, leave me a comment down below and respect my opinion. I respect yours. That's all I gotta say. Let's start off with the worst Harry Potter game, <clears throat> and right now it's Harry Potter and Deadly Hallows Part One. Now, what can I say about this game? This game has graphics. This is the new age. It should have been amazing. It should have been great, but. The sad truth is, it's a bad game. One, here's the thing. You think in this new day and age and any new uh, game right now, we will have mission selects. This is no longer, uh, like, expansion like you get to look over, like, the whole new world, uh, open world. Sorry, I, I was going blank for a second, but open worlds, this is no open world game. This is more like mission, which I don't mind. I don't mind mission. Games where you just go to one level to the next, one level to the next, but they should have a mission select. There is no mission select to this game, and basically, this is like in some cases, like Call of Duty, in some cases, this is because you just the only thing you have to do is shoot your wand and duck, shoot your wand and duck. That's basically what it is. Like some cases, Call of Duty, except Call of Duty, if you play the Call of Duty games, you're shooting and you're do dodging, but you're running, and there's a whole many different techniques. This one is just basically shoot your wand first. And basically that's it and duck. There's nothing else special. There's nothing like my little mind puzzles. There's nothing really this special about this game. Um the graphics are good. Um what else can I say? Some of the spells are really cool, especially this one spell I did where I accidentally hit Hermione with it and all of a sudden me, Ron, and Hermione just went in across the entire map. I thought that was pretty dang cool. But for his little soft spot, it's not a great game. Deadly Halls Part One is a failure of a Harry Potter game because it doesn't Leave something magical behind it. I don't care if it's a mission game that we don't expand Hogwarts or we don't get to visit Hogwarts. I don't mind that. But the problem is with that, they don't have missions to like. They don't, there's no point to some of the stuff because you basically just uh, shoot your wand and that's it. Use a couple spells and dodge. That's it. There's nothing special about this video game. It's a tremendous disappointment of a Harry Potter game. It's a 4.5 out of 10. I just like certain features, but I will never go ever back to this game. It's... In my, prayer, in my opinion, a complete failure to all Harry Potter games. Deadly Hallows Part 1 is number 8 on the list. And I get a 4.5 out of 10, so like that's an F video game. Okay, next up is Harry Potter and Deadly Hallows Part 2. This is slightly better than Harry Potter's Deadly Hallows Part 1, just because it actually has a mission select. So that was great. Um, so There is a little bit more details. They have a little bit extra reef to look at the characters, how they're designed, the graphics again. Awesome, except there's nothing special about it. Um, the move, the moving and running is a slightly little bit better, but other than that, it's not that great of a game. It's like that house part one, except that has mission selects. That's about it. And you get some extra stuff where you go and try to beat the game on regular timer. And I like that. There's certain little challenges, but other than again, there's nothing special about this. It. Like that house part one, just with a few advancements. It's not that great of a game either. Deadly Hallows Part 2? Yeah, it's number 7 on the list. It's a 6 out of 10. It's a bad Harry Potter game as well. And those were the most recent Harry Potter games. What the fuck were they thinking? Okay, let's uh, go a little bit further. And people who say like, oh, it's New Age, you're in war and all this stuff. Well, you couldn't you have like little puzzles? Like you're trying to get through this one door. Okay, well, how about a little... Just do something more than just... Freaking shoot your wand and dodge. That's basically it for those two games. And that's why they're at the bottom of my list. Whew. Okay, let's... Th sorry for the little rant, but let's start off. Okay, now we're going to at least okay to good Harry Potter games. Um, Number six right now is Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. What I liked about this game, this is a mission game too. Uh, just like the Deadly Hallows one, except this one does it right. You get to play not just as Harry, but as Hermione and Ron. In Deadly Hallows Part 1 and 2, you get to play them. As the characters, you only get to play Harry. This one, you get to choose out of the three. In every single mission, you advance your weapons. Well, you advance uh, how powerful is your jinx spell, how strong is your uh, health. You advance upon it. And Her Ron and Hermione, 
and this is for multiplayer. People could play with you. You got two people on the controller, they could help you around. It's a lot more enjoyable with these controllers. It's a lot more better to spells instead of just shoot, 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 and kill. You can use Wingard and Leviosa to lift up the uh, enemies up, and so your partners, Harry, or Harry, Ron, or Hermione, could shoot them down. There's a lot more interesting stuff about this game. Granted, you have the little side missions in order to advance to the next level, but overall, Goblet of Fire was actually, in my opinion, a fun game. It wasn't the greatest Harry Potter game, but it was fun in some cases, and it had some true magical moments. Granted, it was an open world, but still, for a mission game, for Goblet of Fire, I enjoyed it. I liked the part where you're getting chased by the dragon. I did enjoy that. But overall, it's not my favorite Harry Potter game. It's number uh, six on the list, so it's uh, 7.6 out of 10. It's like a C... It's it's a C game. It's a very C plus a video game, in my opinion. So yeah, Harry Potter, Goblet of Fire, number six. Now, number five, a lot of people are going to hate me for this for either playing it too high or too low, but it's Harry Potter and a Half-Blood Prince video game. I got the PlayStation 2 version if you get the PlayStation 3 version. But what I didn't like about this game, because right after Order of the Phoenix, this was basically an expansion of Order of the Phoenix. You just get a little bit more. You, it's like exploration of Hogwarts and everything else out of Order of Phoenix, except a little bit more. You get the Quidditch area where you basically get to get, basically do Quidditch and do for little scores and times. And you also get the dueling clubs, which I did enjoy. But overall, it had little improvement over Order of the Phoenix. There were some things that were better, and they fixed some stuff up with the running and everything and expanded a little stuff. And the story mode for Half Blood Prince, well, what do you expect for the story mode? It's what the Half Blood Prince movie was about. Basically, running around trying to figure out what Draco's doing and basically figure out who the Half Blood Prince is. But overall, it wasn't that interesting a game. It's only when you go to the Dumbledore parts that was kind of interesting about fighting the Horcrux. But overall, the Half-Blood Prince was an okay video game. I don't hate it. I like it slightly better than Goblet of Fire, slightly. But overall, it's a... Uh, how should I... It's a... Uh, I even forget how I freaking ranked this game. I even gave this game a 7.7 7 out of 10. I enjoyed this a little bit more than Goblet of Fire, but overall... Half-Blood Prince, to me, was just a disappointing game because it didn't advance something further upon Order of the Phoenix. But overall, I enjoyed it. I sometimes come back to it just to play the Quidditch stuff, but overall, not my favorite game. Okay, now number four on the list is going to be Harry Potter and a Prisoner Ask Man. Now, here's the name. This was right after the Chamber of Secrets video game, and it had some major improvements. The graphics were certainly better because this was a PS2 version, and... The Chamber of Secrets to PS1, so obviously better graphics, better, um, and more stuff to do, basically. It had a little mini games and all that stuff, and overall, I liked how you get to run a little bit more. I liked how, basically, you were able to move the character, but what maybe not like this game in some cases was the horrible, and I mean horrible, aim system. I mean, seriously, you're trying to go to one certain section of the place. It's very, it's very, very freaking horrible how, like, trying to aim your wand and you're trying to hit specifically that but it doesn't really focus and when you're really trying to focus with R1 or on a controller it doesn't really do much help. Prisoner Askman didn't help the joystick I mean like help the aim system at all and Prisoner Askman actually was the first game, Harry Potter game to actually let you choose between Harry, Ron, and Hermione which I did enjoy and I love that how you get to use teamwork a lot in this entire video game. You use your teamwork, you used to help each other out during this uh, time, and overall, I enjoy Harry Potter and Prisoner as a slightly better than Half-Blood Prince, in my opinion. But overall, it wasn't my favorite game. It's a 7.8 out of 10. It's a good C-plus video game, again, just like the Half-Blood Prince and God with the Fire. But Prisoner Azkaban, I enjoy. Awesome game. Now, number three is Harry Potter and a Sorcerer's Stone. Here's the thing. This was the first Harry Potter game. Oh, I like the first Harry Potter game, the PlayStation 1 version, over all the other Harry Potter, uh, over most of the Harry other po uh, Harry Potter games, because this had a lot of classical moments. You're doing simple stuff. You're not blasting around like crazy. It had simple stuff. They had little puzzles you could just uh, go through, and it was entertaining video game. I enjoyed this video game. I don't understand sometimes they hate for places wrong video games because all oh, the graphics are not that great. But sometimes the older games are better than the not older games uh, uh, than the. The older games are better than the new games, and sometimes, in my opinion. And this Harry Potter and Sorcerer's Stone, or Flouser's Stone, how you ever want to call it, is to me a superior game. I do I really think I go back to this all the time? Not really. I have a PlayStation 1 still, but I wouldn't ever. I don't really think I'll go back to the Sorcerer's Stone, but it's an 8 out of 10 just because something's felt really redundant and the graphics. When you look at this age, 
Yeah, they're kind of bad, but still, overall, Sorcerer Stone, I enjoyed it. I don't understand the hate for Sorcerer Stone at all. It's an 8 out of 10 for me. Now, my second favorite Harry Potter game is one, it's, this game has probably one of my favorite of the books. It's one of my favorite Harry Potter movies of all, so, but... It's Harry Potter and Chamber of Secrets, that movie right there, right behind me. But Chamber of Secrets, this advanced upon Sorcerer's Stone in many ways. One, it, well, there was a lot more puzzles to do. There was, I just really enjoyed this game because it's history. Because trying to figure out what the, who was in the Chamber of Secrets was a lot more interesting. We get more into Hogwarts, different spells, different classrooms. And I really did enjoy the Chamber of Secrets, but some missions just felt really stupid. Like, Getting chased by Professor Lockhart's cupids was fucking stupid as hell. I went back to this and I just recently played it. I'm like, why am I doing this? And in some cases, this game was very difficult. Because if you mess up on one little thing, back to the drawing board, you go. It's a very difficult game. You have to be very precise about what you're going to do. And in some cases, the difficulty brought it down. And not difficulty about that. I mean, if you mess up just once, you could go all the way back to square one. I did that with Hagrid and the Maze when I was trying to go to Hagrid's hut and I was dodging every single buddy so I won't get caught. Because then you go back to square one. At the end, I got caught. And that annoyed the shit out of me. But that passion about being annoyed what made me love this game. And I still love Chamber of Secrets. Chamber of Secrets video game was phenomenal. And to me, it's a great Harry Potter game. I don't understand the hate. Well, it's not a great Harry Potter game. But for its time, it was great. And to me, this is a good Harry Potter game. I gave this game an 8.2 out of 10. Slightly like it better than the Sorcerer's Stone. And my number one favorite Harry Potter game that could ever compare to Lego Harry Potter games is Harry Potter and Order of the Phoenix video game. If you ever want to go to Hogwarts, if you ever want to go to the exploration of Hogwarts, this is the game to do it. This game was phenomenal. Never has Hogwarts been more experienced. I got the PlayStation 3 version and the PlayStation 2 version. I bought this game twice because I fucking loved it. First I had a PlayStation 2, then when I bought the PS3, I just had to get this game. I played it over again. I loved it. Basically... The spells are a lot better. The joystick is the spells. The joystick is the spells. It's not like square, triangle, circle no more. No, it ain't like that no more. And I really like that advancement upon it. You get to, t you get to go everywhere in Hogwarts. The <laughs> you get Hagrid's hut, the Great Hall. You meet Luna and Neville. Long, uh, Luna, Neville, Hagrid. So many characters you get to visit. You go to herbology classes. You can take the classes like potions and... There are so many classes you get to, there are three classes you get to take, you get the grades for it. They have the map sequence, they have the hints where it ain't too difficult to actually uh, figure out your way during Hogwarts. You have plenty of tasks to do. Ascending Dumbledore's army is fun, it's amazing, it's awesome, and I enjoyed it. And granted, you know when you're done with the video game, this is an open world thing. You go back to the stuff and make your spells stronger and more invincible. And I love this fucking game. I was amazed how much I love this game. This is Exploration of Hogwarts. If you ever wanted to go in a Harry Potter video game, I mean, if you ever want to go in the Harry Potter world and you had a video game, and this is the best way to do because this game explored all of Hogwarts, in my opinion. Hasbro Prince added some little stuff, but to me, it started with Order of the Phoenix. This beauty of the Harry Potter world and Hogwarts was there for you, and it was entertaining. It was amazing, and I liked it. Yeah, some people complain, oh, you're doing chores, you're cleaning up this stuff, you're fixing stuff in Hogwarts. Well... It depends on how what you could do in Hogwarts. They had little puzzles, grand staircases, and you also do mini games with chess players. And that was freaking amazing also. To me, Order of Phoenix is the best Harry God Potter game by far of all of them. I gave this game like a 9.3 out of 10. I love this fucking game. This is one of my favorite video games of all time because I'm a big Harry Potter fan. And this gave me everything I wanted as a Harry Potter fan. In my opinion, people, if you want a Harry Potter game with kind of good graphics or like good graphics... For PS3, and you want a good story, you want to explore Hogwarts, and you want to do all this stuff, this is the best way to do it. Because when I was a kid, and when I was uh, seeing this stuff in the movie, I wanted to see the Herbology class, I want to go to the hospital wing, I want to go to Hagrid's hut, and I got all that with the Order of Phoenix. I got everything I ever dreamed about in the Harry Potter games in the Order of Phoenix. Granted, I feel like I wish we faced Baltimore a different way, or I just wish we did some certain things different. Overall, I have hardly any complaints with it. This fulfilled my desire of a Harry Potter universe, and I love it. Order of Phoenix is number one of the best Harry Potter games, and this is the top eight Harry Potter games. Let me know what y'all think, everyone. Subscribe if you like. Just down the bottom. Leave a comment down below. Let me know. Respect my opinion. I'll respect yours. I'm a human being. I'll respect you. 
Just don't leave stupid comments down below, because if not, I'll get pissed off, and I will respond to you in kindly, and I'll say fuck you to you, and that's about it. I'm respectful as a human being, and as long as you're respectful to me, I'll be respectful towards you. Let's treat the other as adults, and that's all I have to say. Alright everyone, this is my, my name is Lee, signing off for everyone yet with everybody. Bye-bye.